When you look at the country right now, when you, you see bet. this deep anger from Americans in both sides, how do you heal these divisions, especially if you have a protracted election? We continue to hear from the president's camp that we will see more legal challenges and recounts. Well, from um, China's perspective, I think um, it is not very helpful to the United States. Uh, China sees a discard, a disorganization. Um, they're able to tell their people that, look, that form of government over there doesn't work. They're disorganized. Look at all those riots they have over there. So it's all this is not helpful uh, to the United States. It's also somewhat true with um, other countries. It's our allies. Uh, they're wondering if we can get our act together. Uh, many of our allies, I think, you know, full disclosure, I'm supporting uh, the vice president to win this election. They would like to see um, the vice president get elected because then that's a, a country, the United States, that they could work with. Um, so it, it really comes down to who is elected. I tend to think of the vice president will pull it out. But then it comes down to what his policy is going to be. With respect to China, it's going to be difficult because he's not going to be weak on China. Uh, there's such bipartisan uh, accord now in Washington, D.C. It tends to uh, cause, uh, state China as a big competitor. Uh, Joe Biden's not going to move from that. But on the other hand, he's going to be a, a person who works with international organizations. He works with the ordinary process of, of diplomacy. Uh, so he'll be very fair, but he'll be very firm. And he'll be someone who uh, the, uh, other countries, including China, can depend upon for at least uh, being consistent. Uh, 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 Joe Biden is not going to uh, engage in diplomacy with his, his Twitter account. He's rather will use usual channels, and I think most other countries find that comforting. Does that mean that it will not be too difficult to get members from both sides of the aisle to agree on foreign policy when it comes to issues like China or even allies? We know that those tariffs are in place still, even against traditional U.S. allies, because if we do see a split government and a protracted contested election, does that mean that the vice president will have less political capital to spend? Well, I think, first of all, um, the president has a mint of foreign policy power. Um, he doesn't have to deal with Congress on a lot of issues when he's dealing with, with foreign countries. However, the more the issues are economic, the more he has to think about Congress. Let's, th let's take tariffs, for example. Even with tariffs, um, tariffs two thirds two tariffs were invoked under emergency action took no approval of Congress. These tariffs that Trump has instituted didn't require approval of Congress. He just did it. And so I think you'll find that if, uh, Joe Biden, if he's president, will not rescind those tariffs. Rather, he'll look at, he'll just try to figure out a way to deal with China so he gets China's respect. You know, we will not be able to advance the ball with China until China respects the United States. Chinese understand strength. They understand strength more than do, I think, people in any other part of the world. They can smell weakness a mile. So the United States has to be firm, has to be strong. And if we are, then I think we'll be able to find a better accommodation than we've had. Do you see more carrot than stick under President Biden? I'm sorry? Do you see a more carrot than stick approach under President Biden? I see both. I see a, a President Biden who um, um, understands China. He knows President Xi Jinping quite well. And they've met many, many times. They've spoken personally a good bit. And I think you'll find President Biden saying, OK, let's find out what works here. It could be very pragmatic. But he'll still respect American ideals, uh, uh, human rights, for example, in Xinjiang, in Hong Kong. It's uh, very important to Chinese people to see America standing up for our, our, our historical values. That's very important, too. So he'd be wanting to stand up with, to our historical values, but also one to be very firm with China. We've seen, of course, in the last few days, the exit of the U.S. from the Paris Agreement. You talk about the return uh, to, uh, to engage with global institutions. Do you see, under a Biden administration, a return of the U.S. to multilateralism, to engaging with these global multilateral institutions? I do. Um, I think his inclination is to see if he can find a way to advance American foreign policy through multilateral organizations, um, so the UN, you know, WTO, IMF, um, NATO, other organizations of the kind. But first, first and foremost, he's going to be practical to see what works. He's not going to join and work with internationals just for the sake of joining them. 
he will only work toward joining them if uh, if his actions see if he sees progress. Another big one is TPP. I personally think it was a big mistake for the United States to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Big mistake. We uh, showed to especially Southeast Asian countries that gee, maybe maybe they can't you can't they can't trust us Americans. Maybe we're not going to be there as much as they like us to. So I, I hope that uh, President Biden, if he gets elected, uh, will he won't do this immediately because there's certain labor issues in the United States. Labor unions really don't like TPP, but he'll find a way to deal with TPP in a way that uh, restores confidence in Southeast Asia that um, we Americans are participating. We're, we're, we're there, but also in a way to deal with, with organized labor to show that we're not taking jobs away. We made a big mistake that uh, we, uh, President Trump and Democrats made in, in, in opposing TPP was we didn't pay enough attention to, to working people who thought they were going to lose jobs. We should have done a much better job there. With the United States withdrawing from those organizations, how much has that benefited Beijing in trying to extend their influence? I think it's, uh, it's helped Beijing a lot. Um, very quietly, Beijing has put its people in various very key positions around the world. World Health Organization is an example. I know there is um, uh, technology standards setting organizations. They put their people there to help set standards. And obviously, if they're set, putting their people to set standards, then probably the standards are going to be more uh, to the liking of, of, of Chinese companies. So we've, we've left a vacuum. We've left a void. It's a, it's a big problem. I, and I frankly find that a lot of my Chinese friends are telling me that uh, they hope Biden wins. Why? Because it's, cause it'll show that American democracy works. That's important to some people in China. It's important to a lot of people in China because they think then they'll see uh, they'll, 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 that, uh, that that will help them with, with their strengthen their hands with the reformers in China. The more American gets belligerent toward China in the in the Senate or in the administration. And, and try to put China down, the more that strengthens the hands of the hawks in China. And President Xi looks at the hawks, he looks at the reformers, he's trying to figure out, gee, where do I go from here? And so we want to, I think as Americans, strengthen the hands of the reformers, and President Xi will listen to that.